in your kit, you will have fabric. This is called Ada fabric. And it might vary in color and size. I just had to work with what supplies I had available to me in the stores. I pretty much bought every hoop that they had at Hobby Lobby and Walmart. And I actually wanted to buy the four inch hoops, but there wasn't enough of those to go around. So I had to get some six inch hoops also. And there's two parts to your hoops. You can unscrew it here on top. And that's how you get that in and out. We'll be putting that fabric in there. A little bit about the fabric. So it's woven so that there's holes in it and the different sizes. So this one is an 11 point Ada fabric that we have here. And my original sample was done on 14. Some people have 11, some people have 14. And the number is having to do with how many of the squares. So like the four dots make up a square. Um, how many of those squares fit in an inch. So an 11 has a bigger space square than a 14. Then there's like numbers like, I've seen 24 um, points and those are very, very, very small. And then there's like, I've even seen eights and those are very big squares. So to get us started, You'll want to take your hoop apart. And like I said, you can unscrew it and to give you some space to pull that second piece off. And then you'll put your fabric there in the middle. And then you just push that top part of it on there. And if it's not loose enough, you can unscrew it some more to get it in. Push all the way around. And then you can tighten it. So it gives you something that you can work with. It's a little easier um, than just having it flat. You can still work on it uh, without a hoop, but it makes it a lot easier. You'll also have, I stuck it into your fabric, your needle. It's rounded on the end, so it doesn't hurt as much when you poke yourself, which is nice. Um, it doesn't really have anything to stab through because there are already holes in this fabric. Notice my fabric's a little off to the center, which I don't have, really have to worry about that right now. I can recenter it later. Um, this was originally in a frame, but I had to use it for the kits. But when I was done, I just cut around the edge to hide all that extra fabric. So the next thing we're going to do is figure out where our middle is here. And you can count to, to the edge and or count from the edge and then center it. Or you can just kind of guess. It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, if you were keeping it already in this frame, you might want to know exactly where the mid middle is. But I'm just going to guess here. And I'm going to mark it with my needle easier than getting out something to mark it with. Um, I can recenter it when I'm done with the project and make sure this is on the top so I can hang it or I can even reframe it in something else that I like better. Now you should also have in your kit a pattern and for every box that we have, so there's kind of like grayish lines, those are your stitches and you're just gonna make X's where those are at. Um, the bigger boxes kind of help you count a fast faster. So like there's five in each of these. My middle point is right here on this pattern. And I'm actually going to just mark it. You can mark it with a pen or something, but that way I know where that middle is. And we probably won't finish today. There it does take a while. The sample one took me about three and a half hours to finish, even though it looks quite simple. But I was also kind of trying to figure out the pattern and all that while I was making it. Um, so
So I'll just start with our first part up here. I'll count how many it needs to be over from the middle. So I can already tell you this is five and that is five. So the middle of the heart here is 10 over and then it would be four up from that. So I'm gonna go from this middle and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then it was four up. One, two, three, four. And the fourth was actually a stitch. So I'm going to be stitching in that uh, box right here. And if I bring that in a lot closer, we'll zoom in. I'm going to be stitching this box, making an X. Also in the kit, I kind of added information on how you do the X's. And you'll always want all of your stitches going one way first and then going all the way back the other side. And you'll want to take two of the strands from your embroidery floss and separate them from it. There's six in each strand. And then you'll thread that into your needle. I'm gonna make sure I know what stitch I need to stitch in, kind of just spreading out the holes there so I can see it from both sides. You could also take a pencil and erase it, or you can take like one of those water soluble pens that you use in uh quilting or any other kind of sewing project so i am working on threading this so i'm going to flip this over i can still see where i wanted to stitch and i'm going to go into the bottom here and pull it up through so if you look from the front we're there and on the back we've got our tail and I'm going to take the tail, kind of pull it towards the end. And I like to hold it in place with one of my fingers. I'm going to do my first half of an X by going diagonally. And I still have this tail back here. And to hold that in place, I'm going to go right across it. I'm going to focus up close. I've got that tail right here, and I'm going to make a stitch over it. It goes up and down on the back. So now I'm right here below my diagonal that I made. And then I'm going to go diagonal the other direction because on my pattern, I only have one stitch in this row. So I'm doing the bottom portion of the heart. Now for the next row, there's three. And if you see from the back, I'll be going back here, here in the front. I've gone over one box and then I'm gonna go diagonally. going to go to the point right below that. And then do another diagonal. And do another diagonal. Now I've reached the end of how many is going to be in this row. 
I accidentally pulled up the end of the tail. So if you, you do something like that, you can just pull it back to the back side so that it's not on the front. And then I'm going to go back over the diagonals that are slanted to the right with diagonals that slant to the left. So following the pattern, you would then do another row that is five. And for each box, it's just one stitch. And you can choose whatever colors you want in each section. And here I've gotten a knot. I'm just gonna put my needle in there and pull it out. Occasionally, if your threads are long, they get a knot and you just have to work it out. And I'll show you the back side here. And the back is a lot of just up and down lines. We kind of have a couple diagonals as we're moving to our next stitches. And just a general practice I've kind of had when changing colors. We don't have a whole lot of changing colors in this, um, or I guess working in different areas. So say I had like some stitches over here that are farther away. Um, you don't want to go over an area that's like more than five stitches away because it's just getting into the back won't look as nice. And really, your back doesn't have to look perfect to this. Um, it's generally a nice idea to keep it a little flatter so that when you frame it, um, if you're framing it, it's not too bulky. So then my next row, I'm actually going to get a marker out here to help you kind of keep track of where you are. You can either take a marker or a pen, pencil, and you can mark off what you've already done. So I had already done this one, and then I've done these. And I did these. So I know that I've done those stitches already. And as you uh, continue doing cross stitch, it it's kind of a craft that you can kind of do mindlessly over time once you've practiced. So you could uh, do this while watching something or listening to an audio book. And if you're interested in continuing um, cross-stitching, I do have a display of cross-stitch books. And actually, I got a couple more in today that I just put out. Um, there's like a Disney princess one. There's some cross-stitch with attitudes one. There's a Star Trek one here. So it's not just the old time uh, cross stitch samplers that you may have seen in the past, but there's also a lot of fun and pop culture trendy cross stitch patterns. Oh, there's one also that I just put out that's for fans of books. So it's all literary themed or um, book themed one. Google has them. You could just search cross-stitching. You also can get them through our Ohio Digital Library. 
And on that one, there's the eBooks, but there's also magazines. Some of the crafting magazines have uh, cross stitch patterns in them too. We also have the Hobbies and Crafts Reference Center, which is available on our resources page. Um, so if you go to our website, defiancelibrary.org, under resources, yes, <laughs> it's under resources and then research tools. And then you would scroll down to the DIY section, DIY resources, and then it's hobbies and crafts reference center. And there are a bunch of patterns and projects on there. And I'm starting to get to the end of my thread. And it's also kind of twisted here. So if it gets twisted, you can just kind of flip it over and unwind it. I have only a little bit more of thread and I can't really do much more with it. So what I'm gonna do is go to the back and pull up these loops, just stick my needle un under them. Bring that closer. And I'm gonna push it through. Pull. And then that's kind of locked them in place so that it's not going to go anywhere. And I can trim it. And then I would just pick up from there, start it like we did before, using two more strands of the embroidery block. And whatever you're marking with, you want to make sure that you can tell the difference between your words here that I have and the marker. It's actually kind of hard for me to tell. That's why I did the dotting instead of lines. And those are going to be done in a back stitch. So that one's actually not a cross stitch, but Back stitches are often used in cross stitch pieces to do words or any other kind of detail work. And like before, I'm going to make sure that stitch is going to hold my tail in place. And I'll continue following my pattern. I did look up some history of cross stitch since during the quilling one, we had some interest in the history. Um, I found that cross stitch has actually been around for a long time also. Um, and needlework has been found in the earliest history as far back as the sixth century BC. Um, they're fa they found a piece in an Egyptian tomb that had embroidery and needlework on it and cross stitch was a stitch that was used in it. Um, back then, usually the embroidery had a bunch of different stitches. It wasn't patterns that were done only in X's like this. So here I'm gonna pick up that stitch that I forgot. It, also mentioned that the 11th century tapestry was very popular and pretty famous in the time period so like it was common in many households and it often included cross stitches also so it still at that point wasn't just doing cross stitch stitches as one stitch in the piece um around 11,100 AD was when counted cross stitch actually started to be a thing. 
at that point, it was used kind of as just repeating patterns on a grid. Um, it was used by the Moors and it was called black work because it was most often just white linen and wool from a black sheep. And then it was those geometric designs that were used. It didn't really start taking off in England until 1500 AD. And that was when Catherine of Argonon brought black work and the idea of cross stitch to use because she was doing it on um, King Henry VIII's shirts. So that's when it kind of got popular in England. And I actually noticed I've made a mistake. So if you ever have a mistake, you can kind of just pull it out by taking your needle off and pulling those stitches out. Because I've been talking instead of paying attention to what I was doing. It's actually way back there. So. And then the first pattern book was made in Germany in 1524, so 1524, and the first known counted cross stitch was then published in England. There's no surviving copy of the book or that um, published pattern, but there is references to it existing, so that's how they kind of know about it. Um, because back then they didn't really have the ability to print things as easily and the printing press didn't kind of happen for a couple more years there. So about the 18th century is when they started doing just a cross stitch sampler kind of idea. During the 19th century, the sampler making and cross stitch kind of went into a decline because in 1820, it wasn't really until the 60s that it really got rediscovered as a craft that people just did as like a hobby. And that had a lot to do with there being a lot more time um, in the home with a lot more automated stuff and having more time for leisure activities. And then there's also a different kind of fabric that's called waste canvas that you can use on like sweaters or other fabrics and it gives you those boxes so that you can do the cross stitch and then you add water to it and it dissolves and that was introduced in the 80s and also at that time there was the plastic canvas that was introduced so that you can do cross stitch in more of a 3D format because they can be sewn together and put together. Here you can see the difference between this is the 11 point and this is the 14 point. It's a lot bigger. So here in my pattern, I've got a space in between. So I'm just gonna skip over and continue. On the other side, I could also just decide to do the six and go up and do the one side of the heart and then do the other side. But it was only one I'm skipping, so it's not that big of a deal.
I've got my heart, my first one done. And I'm gonna close it off here. What I'll do to start the next one, I'm not actually gonna start at the bottom because it's kind of easier to count over from here. So I'll just count one, two, three, four, five. So there's five in between the two. So I'll just count here. One, two, three, four, five. And that sixth stitch right here, I'm gonna start my cross stitching into. And I can either work up or I can work down from there and just fill it in as I go. It's basically just a lot of counting. It's good for keeping your brain active too, just like knitting and crochet. I'm gonna take some of the black for my back stitch. You could use a different color if you have any other um, embroidery floss, but I liked the black for it. It showed up pretty well. And then I'm gonna actually take two, just like we did for the stitches. Sometimes it calls for one, but I'm thinking it'll show up better with two. And then put that threaded here. And once your heart is done, you can start this. Um, you'll want to, once again, kind of count to figure out where you want to start at. And probably the easiest place to start is like right off of this middle area because there's no doubt of how many count you have. And I'm going to start doing this R right here. So I know it's one down and I'm going to start from that spot. Find it here on the back. And that's my one down. We'll zoom in there. So it matches up on my pattern and I'm going to pull through. And just like before, I'm gonna lock in that stitch. And so I only have one over. I'm gonna do one over like that. I'm locking in my stitch back here. So this one now is two. Oh, I realize it's blurry down there. So it's two down. And to do the back stitch for that, I'm just gonna pull up here. Go back to where we were here. And then where I just started that stitch before, I'm gonna meet up with it again. So that's how the, how it's um, referred to as a back stitch because you're going back and forth. So we've made those two. And then this one is actually a slant across it. So we're actually gonna stitch over the slant that we have already there. And because I just went down and that stitch there, I should be able to pull up there and then stitch there. So there's our slant and finishing the rest of the R according to the pattern. I'm just going to go around the loop. And there I've made an R. So wherever there's a line is basically where you do your back stitch at. And when you're done stitching, you just pull off like you did before. Um, I'll kind of do an example of it, even though I'm not finished at it. So you would just kind of pick up some of the stitches here and pull it through and lock it in place.
just like with the counted cross stitch part, it's just more counting. It's just math hidden as crafting. And also say I'm working on this and I have this heart done over here. You wouldn't want to just continue your stitch all the way across because let me just kind of pull it up over here and then I'll pull it out later. You can kind of see those stitches through there. You can't really see it well on the camera, but you can see the black stitching through there of this. And that doesn't always look too good when it's framed. So when you're doing your back stitching, you definitely don't want to do that <laughs> across areas that there isn't going to be any stitching. And I actually might drop down and do the love part first and then just go back to the tea because then I'm using less of the embroidery floss. Mm -hmm.